Thanks for your company here on Richo. I was about to say Richo and Jones, you get used to saying it, but no, here on Richo. Now, in our Melbourne studio, I believe, we have Grace Collier. Now, Grace Collier has written many articles of, of recent times about trade unions, many of, them, many of them not terribly complimentary. Mind you, there are some trade unions about, about which it's very hard to be complimentary. So welcome to the program, Grace. Thank you, Richo. Now, um, I, I want to start with, uh, with the Royal Commission. Now, I, I note, um, you know, you, you've... Uh, one comment I, I just read out from your... Uh, one of your recent articles where you said, since this scandal began, it has generally been assumed that while many of the shortened wage deal caused work or workers to lose out, and while money changed hands, and this was a terrible look, nothing has actually been done that might fall foul of any obligation, duty or law. I think that's fairly obvious. So what is the big deal if, if there's no problem with the law, no, no breach that we can see of a regulation or anything else, what's the problem? OK. Well, before we start, I just want to take issue with your characterisation of me in the promo. I'm not anti-union, I'm anti-union corruption. There's a big difference. But secondly, just to go to your question, Richo, the, the problems that we have is, as you know, the purpose of a Royal Commission is to examine workplace law and to examine the things that are going on in our community between unions and employers and in the workplace. And they are supposed to see what recommendations should be made for legislative change. So they might find things that are going on now that are legal that should be illegal. So for instance, if an employer decides to put people into a union without their knowledge, is that necessarily illegal? Maybe not. Should it be illegal? Probably. It is in other countries. If a union decides to take money off the boss in exchange for doing an EBA that cuts everybody's wages, is that necessarily illegal? Don't know yet. It's all a bit blurry. Should it be illegal? But has that yes, happened? it should. I mean, I, I want to know if that's happened. I, I know that, that that's what that's the tone of what you've written. But if you pass a no disadvantage test, does that not mean that, that, that you can't just pluck out the bad bits? There must be good bits. It doesn't mean that at all, Richo. Look. Not so much now because the, the Fair Work Act in terms of the bargaining legislation is very, very good in my opinion. But prior to the Fair Work Act, uh, the Commission relied upon the assurances of union officials that agreements passed the no disadvantage test. And there's clearly lots of agreements, and I've written about them, that should never have passed that test. And they passed that test on the, on the assurance of officials. So union officials, when they used to send uh, agreements to the Commission, they'd send them up with a statutory declaration saying, this passes the test. And the Commission would rubber stamp it, and clearly they shouldn't have. So that is an issue. Um, now, why would union officials do agreements that pass the no disadvantage test, that's something for the Commission to look at. But if money has changed hands at the same time, Richo, that doesn't pass the sniff test. No, it, it certainly doesn't pass the pub test, as Alan Jones would say. Uh, and so I think it's a bad look. But as I said at the start, I can't see where any rules or regulations have been broken. But there's more to it than that. Let's look at the Winslow Agreement as an example. You've had a bit to say about that as well, as well haven't you? Oh, well, look, the Winslow Agreement is the agreement that everybody in the Labor camp wants to talk about because workers in that agreement weren't ripped off sort of terribly much. They were still paid reasonable wages. They were paid less wages than they would have been if they were under the CFMEU, but they weren't absolutely dudded. No, but I, this is what really irritates me about, about this whole argument, is what you just said. They've been paid less than what they would have been at, at the C of MEU. That's probably true. But it's also mm. true that they're, they're, they don't have to go through the dramas, that is the employers, of stop works, of the strong arms and all the rest of it. That jobs get done on time and on budget or better than budget. Is that not a good thing? I mean, you can't on the one hand say they're a thuggish union, the, the, the C of MEU, it's a disgrace the way they operate, and then say, but if Bill Shorten does do the same thing, he's weak. I mean, there has to be some sort of line here where you say, no, that's not the way we want to go. We prefer deals with employers that advantage both sides and that get infrastructure completed. Isn't that sensible? No, Richo, you're wrong. And I'll tell you why you're wrong. You are confusing the rights of union officials with the rights of normal people, with workers. They are not the same thing. 
ordinary people, employees, have the right to decide which union they want to be in. If, if someone wants to be in the CFMEU, then they have that right. Now, employers should never be deciding out the back room with a union official which union their employees yeah, are going to be you, in. Can you find anywhere where, where there's some mass movement of workers complaining about what happened? They didn't, because they did pretty well out of it. Richo, and by the I don't way, know if you know like this. spending lots of time on the grass unless they're forced to, and so they're very no, no, happy not to. No, of course they to. don't. Of course they don't. But you don't need to tell me what workers like or don't like, because unlike you, I've actually been a union official. I've worked for three unions. I've been on more picket lines than you've had hot breakfasts. I've been and on I a actually few. know what I've I'm talking about. I've been on a about. few. Don't you worry. Well, maybe you've been on a few, shuffling in and out and bossing people around. I I've actually been people. doing the I work. I could never boss any workers around or any oh, unions Richard, around. Please. I never ever have, because I, I wasn't a union official. I couldn't do it, as you rightly point out. But I, I was right, born well, into a Right, well, union I have family. Been... I've lived with unions all my life, a lot longer than you have. Well, you're, well, that's only because your life's been longer than mine. So I spent a long time in the union movement. I've worked for three unions. I've been on many picket lines. I know what I'm talking about. People do not like being told which union to join, and they do not like being told to join the AWU. It's Australia's worst union, Australia's weakest union. It's the boss's union, and it has a reputation for selling workers out in exchange for cash. And unfortunately, Richard, it does, Richo, not have, that. That, that it does have that it does reputation. Not. Ask just anyone. Wrong. That's just no, wrong. No, it's not wrong. No evidence. Ask anyone. No evidence whatsoever of that. You pick out the odd deal and say that's the reputation, as if they do it in every deal. Now, and that's just oh, wrong. Richo, I've got a stack of deals that big on my desk and I've only gone through a couple because I don't have that much time to devote to this fellow. But, you know, give me time. Give everyone else time. You know, the AWU does have that reputation. If you're not aware of that, then I don't know what you've been doing. You've been spending too many time in posh restaurants. Well, I, I, I do like the odd posh restaurant. That, that I, I, I know, I've I, heard I, I that will, about you. I, I will not deny, and uh, one, one <laughs> would never achieve my girth without it. Well, but look, I do too. Said, I like them too, and I think you should take me to a few in exchange for coming on your program and boosting your crappy ratings. Do you, re do you reckon you'll be doing that? I've got to say, my ratings have I been reckon, pretty good. I'll have a look to see if they're any better I reckon, with I tonight. reckon they'll be pretty good now. I reckon they'll be through the roof. I reckon that you will never have had as many viewers as the night that to, as tonight. I'm prepared. You'll be to, stratospheric. I'm prepared to bet that's not quite right, um, but I'll certainly check well, tomorrow. I don't know I'll, about that. I'll let I don't you know. know about that. I will let yeah. you know. Um, Good. But uh, I, I, I'd be very surprised if that was the case. Now I, I wanted to cover a few other things, though. Um, first off, uh, I wanted to cover Kathy Jackson. Um, it's yes. pretty extraordinary what's happening with Cathy Jackson. The Royal Commission were very reluctant to hear any evidence against her. Now she's had this case that gets delayed and delayed because she's got mental illness, then suddenly she's declared bankrupt and, and it's off again. I mean, what is happening? Well, I mean, look, you do need to look back at what happened last year. Don't you remember last year when she was absolutely grilled on all her comings and goings and, the, and her love life and we had the stories about the dentist chair in the lounge room and what she used to do with the dentist, in the dentist chair with the ex and all of that? And then remember she said that she was attacked? So, look, I think last year the Commission was kind of finding its feet, but I do think they did, they did have a go at her and they may return to her. And, I, look, I think... Kathy Jackson needs to face the full force of the law. She has to face up to what she did and she has to be held to account. But she's that not. She's like Craig Thompson. She convinces herself she's done nothing wrong. I mean, how can you put in an affidavit to this current court case and say, listen, I, I don't remember what the work purpose was of my trip to Las Vegas, but there would have been one. I mean, who's going to believe that? I and mean, it's like Craig Thompson saying, I never rang anybody from my motel room and I never went to a place I shouldn't have gone to and did things I shouldn't have done with someone I shouldn't have done them with. But we all know he did. Well, nobody's going to believe that. I mean, the answer, Richo, is nobody's going to believe any of it. So the process has to be gone through. There has to be the natural justice afforded and at the end the result will happen and, you know, we'll all just sit back and have to wait, I guess. Well, speaking of, last thing, speaking of natural justice, how is it that Mick Lawler can go on unlimited sick leave at $425,000 a year. Didn't look too sick appearing last week in the court. This is mm. a scandal of massive proportion in my view. Oh, 
Oh, look, I agree with you there, Richo. I think that what should happen is that Parliament should vote to dismiss that particular commissioner. Apparently the process is that somebody needs to make a written complaint. The best person to make that written complaint is somebody that has been afforded some sort of discretion or injustice at his hand. Um, they need to make that written complaint to the Minister and then I think Parliament should vote to dismiss him. I, I hope Parliament get around to doing that very soon. I must leave it there, but thank you very much your for breath. your time. And if the ratings are boosted, then I'll thank you very much. But I will let you know that tomorrow, and I will talk about it yeah. next week on the program. Okay, so well, thank we'll let you, everybody Richo, because, know how you went. Well, well right? look, please do, because it's been like trying to break into the Melbourne Club coming on this show. No, it hasn't. I, I've, oh. I, 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 I asked you today, and um, I, I got a. I got around and aren't you it's lucky I get... responded, yes? I, all you have to, have to do is call me. If you want to come on and have something to say, just ring. I'm always right. open. Always. All right. Okay. All right. I've heard that about you. I've heard you're always open, always. but I will call in time. You do that. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Grace Thanks Collier in Melbourne, and I'll be back in just a moment with John Connor from the Climate Institute.